Hi, my name is Mike Goyet. I'm a level designer at the Guild Hall, and I'm using the May 2011 version of UDK. The purpose of this tutorial is to teach the crowd system, which basically allows you to spawn hundreds of enemy AI to do things like follow a set path, which is exactly what I'm going to cover in this video. First thing we want to do is get a simple level set up. As you can see here, I have a basic cube surface, I have a player start, and I have a light. Next up, we want to start placing destination points, which are essentially like path nodes, except for crowds. We can do that by going to the content browser, actor classes, crowd, and then destination. And then we right click in the scene, and click add game, de add game crowd destination here. And then we'll go ahead and add a second one right over here. And then from there, we want to alter the properties. Um, I'm going to start with the first initial uh, game crowd destination point that I placed. And you can see here that we have a bunch of options that we can uh, play with. But the first thing we want to do is lock this window, click on the second uh, game crowd destination point that we added, and then click this little green arrow next to next destinations which will essentially draw a yellow line when we click it that points to the second one here and then what we want to do is open this one up and click the checkbox for kill when reached so what I just did was I basically set up two points one which basically is going to later spawn all the AI and then tell them to move to the second point and when they get there they'll all be killed Next step, we want to set up our enemy AI, which we can do by creating archetypes. So we want to go back to the content browser, go to actor classes, uncheck this use actor as parent here, do a search for crowd, and then we can see that we got a bunch of different options here, but what we want is game crowd list of agents. We're going to right click that, and then go to create archetype, and you can name these whatever you want, but I'm going to name it crowd test package and then crowd test underscore agents list now I'm going to do the same thing with this UT game crowd agent right here crowd test package this crowd test underscore UT agent. And then we'll go find those in the uh, content browser. Do a search for crowd. And we got them right here. And the first thing we want to do is make them recognize each other. So we're going to go into the list of agents, game crowd underscore list of agents properties and we're going to click add next to the list of agents option bring this menu down and then right here is where we want to set um, what agents we're going to be looking at here under agent archetype so we're going to select the UT agent that we just made click a little green arrow and there it is right in there and that's all we have to do for archetype um, although, just as a note, uh, you can go down to UT Agent here, open its properties, and this is where you can set a lot of uh, the parameters for the agents themselves. Uh, you can go and modify their health, modify, modify how fast they move, uh, their pathing. You might want to even, uh, it would be a really good idea to check, check for obstacles. And you can pretty much tweak all these settings to whatever you want them to do. Uh, this is probably the best place to mess with their settings. Next thing we want to do is set up the navigation meshes, which is the really, really easy part. Pretty much all it entails is right-clicking within the scene here, going down to Add Actor, and Add Pylon. And just with that one pylon, we've pretty much covered the entire level. We can see what we just did by clicking Build Paths up here. 
and the green part is the area that the AI will be able to navigate and the red part is the area that the AI cannot navigate. Uh, one note about navigation meshes is that you never want to have a pylon within another pylon's uh, radius. So basically if we added a pylon over here, then this would be fine where it is right now. And if we click build pass we'll be able to see. So their radii are intersecting right here, which is fine. The only problem is if you dragged it in here, then you can even see the line goes red there. They they cannot be inside each other's paths, otherwise you'll always get that red air. So they have to be outside. Now the final step is tying everything together in Kismet. So we'll open that Kismet browser, go down to new, right click, go down to new event, and then level loaded. And then again, right click, new action, go down to crowd, and then UT spawn. And now what we're going to say is, we're going to click on the black box next to uh, start, and drag that over to loaded and visible. So that means whenever the level uh, is loaded and visible, we're going to start the UT crowd spawn. And under spawn points, we're going to define where our uh, agents are actually going to spawn, and we'll click on our uh, first uh, destination here and then on this pink box we right click new object bar using cra game crowd destination underscore zero and then we click back on UT crowd spawner and now we can set the agent list which we'll find back in our content browser and that is right here and we click the little green arrow and now it's all set. That's all we have to do with Kismet. Actually, I take that back. One last thing we have to do in Kismet is go into UT Crowd Spawner and make sure these two are checked, which they aren't by default. These will basically make it enable crowd light environment and cast shadows make it so that your models don't look really dark in game. So then we press play. And there's all of our enemy AI. As you can see already, hundreds of uh, hundreds of them are spawning, and they're all racing to their death at that kill path node. And as they die, more will replace them, and they'll just keep on spawning infinitely like that. And one last note is that you can vary the models for these by just going into the UT agent and just adding more models in there, so that you can have several different types of models in the crowd. And uh, that wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for listening.